Good morning to everyone and welcome to this uh, application development meeting. Uh, I'm really happy to be able to start the application development meeting again. Uh, passed a while since the last uh, the last meeting, and in fact, uh, the there are few news. The few news is that, as you can see, the virtual group has been restarted. You can see the um, URL. Uh, here on the slides, uh, I'm just uh, I just started uh, uh, leading the user group, and um, my name is Davide Mauri. I just moved here in Redmond, and I uh, and I also moved from BI to development. Actually, I started uh, in development in '97, then I did for more than 10 years BI, and now I'm back to development. So, also that's why I decided to help leading the 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 uh, the applicant the pass user group. Um, you can see all my um, information here on the slide and also um, a good news about the user group is that we have a new scope so it's not only limited to SQL Server stuff but uh, we are just uh, open to the entire Microsoft Data Platform so in future we also speak about document DB, graph database, uh, uh, Hadoop, uh, whatever is related uh, to the Microsoft Data Platform of course always uh, seeing things from a development perspective and also we are open not to uh, not only to .NET but to any language that may interest with the Microsoft Data Platform, so Python, R, uh, Java, um, every language that can be used to uh, build stuff with Microsoft Data Platform is more than welcome. So these are the news uh, related to the, this uh, virtual user group restart. Uh, we are part of the PAST, the Professional Association of SQL Server. Uh, you can find more information here, the PAST.org, and of course also you can find information on any uh, of the major social media, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, of course. Uh, just a mention on a nice events that will be held online uh, in the next uh, month. If you are interested, there will be 24 hours of training, free training, uh, delivered by uh, well-known speakers on really interesting subjects. So you can just uh, click on the slides. You can download the slides uh, right from uh, uh, the application. There is a section called uh, handouts, and you can just uh, uh, download the slides from from there. And you can click on the link and register to the 24 hours of pass. Um, for free for free training, uh, we are part of uh, a set of uh, pass that also uh, uh, gives uh, us a lot of virtual user group. We are just one of the many application development, but as, I, as you can see, there are really really a lot of uh, user groups. Again, everything is free. You can just uh, subscribe and register to the one you are interested into, and just start to learn uh, uh, really cool and interesting stuff for free. Now, next meetings, just a couple of uh, uh, mention. Uh, the next one will be uh, about R, an introduction uh, to R, and then we'll be talking about uh, a very new cool feature just announced a couple of days ago, which is the graph data processing um, with the PM of the of the um, of this feature. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that will happen in the next in the next month. So just stay tuned. And uh, now let's move to the today's meeting that is also really, really interesting, actually it's one of my favorite topic, is uh, using JSON with SQL Server and SQL Azure. We have uh, Jovan Popovic, I really hope to have said your name correctly, Jovan, um, yes. presenting uh, presenting the topic. He is the program, the program manager of uh, Microsoft SQL Server and especially uh, JSON. He also uh, he's really active in the community, as you can see. He presented in, uh, in a lot of, of uh, events. So I'm really, really happy to now hands all the console to him so that he can just uh, show us all the really cool features that SQL Server can do with, with JSON. Right, Jovan? Oh, sorry, Jovan? Yes, yes. thank you, Davide. You're very welcome. So here you go. Now you have full control. Thank you very much. So, thank, thanks to everybody who attended this meeting. Uh, today I will talk about uh, JSON support in SQL Server and, and how you can build REST APIs using SQL Server and new JSON functions. Uh, 
So I'm program manager in Microsoft Development Center Serbia. I'm working on the SQL Server and Azure SQL database. And I'm working on various projects. Uh, my first project was JSON support in SQL Server. I'm working on T-SQL language and I work on many new T-SQL features that are introduced in uh, SQL Server 2016 and uh, 2017 like string split, string aggregate, drop if exist, uh, many new functions that are added. I worked also on temporal in-memory technologies such as in-memory OLTP, column store. Now, now I'm working on intelligent database and new feature that we are adding called automatic tuning. So today I will talk about JSON support in SQL Server and how you can use this JSON support to build REST APIs in, uh, using SQL Server. First part of this session will be short introduction into JSON support in SQL Server and where you can see how we can combine relational and semi-structured data in SQL Server database. Here's the overview of uh, support of, of JSON support in SQL Server and Azure SQL database. First, we have added four simple functions such as JSON value, JSON query, JSON modify, and is JSON that enables you to take data from JSON text and find values on some path or to find some fragment like array of or sub object on some path. You can also modify JSON text or check is JSON properly formatted. So if you store JSON as text in any column, you can use these functions to query JSON, modify JSON, add some check constraints that can verify that JSON is valid. There's also new open JSON function. This function will transform JSON array into a table result set. So in this example, we have one JSON array with two objects. And with open JSON function, you can easily parse this JSON object and just transform it into a table with two rows. Every key and value will be just transformed into cell and the value in the, in the row. And this can be used to easily either import JSON data in tables or query JSON data that is stored in, in tables. And finally, we have this for JSON clause that enables you to select some data from table or create any report and just return results uh, in JSON format. So now you can choose between standard tabular format or you can use for JSON clause to format everything as JSON text and send it to client as a JSON. So first feature that uh, you're that you're able to use is combining relational and JSON data in tables. As you can see in this example, you can create any table that can have standard columns like ID, name, type, price. But also now you can combine these columns with uh, the text columns that contain the JSON text. As an example, imagine that this is some uh, products table where you want to put some tags like promo, sales, uh, etc. Now you can store the, this as a JSON arrays and use it as a, any array in a, in a single column. Or you can add various fields like key value pair, pairs. Like if you have a product like bike, you can put a number of gears, weight. If you have a car, you can put the door seats, uh, and all other custom fields inside the JSON column. And this way you can avoid some complex schema or entity object value pattern if you don't need a complex schema just to show custom, custom data for some field. If you have a table with combined regular data and JSON columns, you can use the JSON functions such as JSON value to extract the data from these JSON columns. In this example, I can select data from product table, take this product ID and name columns, and then parse this uh, data uh, column or details column and 
uh, return weight, uh, weight property in this JSON field. I can also use this JSON values in where clause uh, and filter results using some values. Excuse me, excuse me, Jovan. It seems uh, there is a glitch on the top right of the screen. Uh, we still see the pass, uh, um, the pass logo. Maybe you can just, I'll try to, oh yeah, now it's fixed. Okay, yeah, now it's visible. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So you can combine relational and JSON data. So you can put standard columns and JSON columns in the same table. And you can use a JSON value function to take uh, some column with uh, JSON fields and find and extract some value on some key. Like in this case, JSON value will parse the data column and just take weight or gender uh, fields from this JSON uh, cell. And you can use it either in select clause, where clause, or order by clause. One question that people usually ask is how can we index JSON data? Here you can see one pretty much complex query when we are using JSON values in group by, having clause, in order by clause. And usually this query will use uh, full table scan, like clustered index scan, to take all data and calculate this report. But you can, although we don't have a special index on JSON data, you can use the same indexes that you use on all other columns. Like you can identify here all uh, JSON value expressions, like JSON value data manufacturing cost, or this JSON value uh, function that extracts type from data column. And then you can create a computed column type and manufacturing cost that will just expose these values. So here we have added column type that represents JSON value with a, uh, taken from column data and you can, we are just extracting type key. Manufacturing cost is similar. We are just taking JSON value from data column and taking this manufacturing cost field and casting it as flow. Now we can add index uh, on these fields. So here I'm just adding JSON index on the product table and I'm putting type uh, column, this is uh, computed column, and color, this is standard column from the table as a key values in the index. And I'm also including second uh, computed column manufacturing cost. So this is the same way how you are optimizing regular queries. So if you add this kind of index, instead of full table scan, you will have something like this. This query will now use index seek into non-clustered index, and this query will be much faster and optimized. So you can use any type of index, like uh, you can put a cluster column store indexes on this table to get 10x compression of JSON data. If you are putting uh, JSON values in uh, memory optimized tables, you can create all uh, memory optimized indexes like hash indexes or uh, B3 indexes in Hector B3 indexes. So theoretically there's no limit how you can optimize your uh, JSON data. One probably most important feature for web developers is a for JSON clause. <laughs> we have added this for JSON path clause that can take results from the query and just format results as JSON. So in this example, I'm just selecting data from products table, adding this for JSON path, and as a result, I will get one JSON text as an output. I can take this JSON text and send it to some web client without some, without need to transform it from relational format to JSON in application layer. Another feature that might be very useful is transforming JSON to a result set. In this example, I have one array with five JSON objects. And then you can use new open JSON function where you can just pass this JSON text and open JSON will just parse it and return results. In open JSON function, you can specify with clause where you can specify what columns you want to extract from JSON. 
in this example, I'm extracting product ID, name, price, type, and data. And I'm specifying what type uh, should be assigned to each column. So in this case, uh, SQL Server will just parse uh, JSON text, take these keys, product ID, name, uh, and price, convert them in int, envar, car, money columns, and just return them as relational data. Know that if you have uh, some uh, sub objects, like in this case we have data and tags that are object or array, you can use this as JSON clause that will specify that open JSON function should return this sub object as JSON object instead of returning it as plain text. So you can use this uh, function just to import some data or do something like querying on. Uh, semi-structured data formatted as JSON. So second part of this uh, uh, presentation will be uh, building REST APIs using SQL Server or how you can exchange data, JSON data with client uh, applications. So JSON support is mainly built for web developers and web applications. So in this classic example, you have some web browser that is sending initial request to web server, that web server returning some HTML or some similar response. Then you have uh, modern web applications where you are sending AJAX request to web server. Web server executes some T-SQL query. T-SQL is return, uh, result uh, return from database, and then you're just returning JSON as a response to your web browser components. The idea of JSON is that with, uh, now with built-in JSON support, you can easily take your data from database and just directly format it as JSON text and return it to your web clients. One of the main use cases is building REST APIs for React, uh, Angular, D3 visualization libraries or any other libraries that are sitting in web browser, just expecting some JSON data that is coming from some REST endpoints. You can easily create REST endpoints uh, using standard .NET Core, Node.js, Azure function, or any other technology that can just uh, read data from SQL uh, database and just serve responses JSON. In, in the examples later, we will see how you can build this REST API using .NET Core and new JSON functionalities. So this is traditional implementation of uh, REST APIs in either web apps and mobile apps. Usually you have some SQL server or relation, standard relational database where you have some data then you're using some data access, object relation mapper or some other uh, component just to read data from SQL Server. You transform this into some C-sharp objects. And then sometimes you need to transform this in some view model objects or, or model objects or data transfer objects depending on, the, on your architecture. And then you have some REST API that just converts this view models into JSON text and return that JSON response to your web clients. Now with JSON functions, you can easily just uh, select some data from table, format it directly as JSON result, and directly just return it to your web client without some overhead of transforming result set into JSON, into C-sharp objects, domain objects, or view models. Now you can just directly send this JSON text as an output of REST API. Another use case is importing JSON objects from uh, clients, web clients into database. So usually you have some REST API that is accepting some JSON text. You're converting this JSON text in some data transfer object, model object, or some similar C sharp object. Then you're sending this to some ORM or some data access library that will transform this C sharp objects into SQL queries. And then you are inserting this data in a SQL Server database. Now, as an alternative, you can just take entire JSON text, 
send it directly to SQL Server and use new open JSON function just to transform uh, JSON data into relational format and directly store it in uh, SQL uh, tables. If you want to learn more about uh, JSON support, uh, you can find many examples on official uh, Microsoft SQL Server GitHub uh, repository account. Into samples, features, JSON uh, folder, you can find many examples like how to use uh, SQL Server and JSON functions with the uh, Entity Framework, AngularJS, uh, ReactJS, how to use it with uh, .NET Core or Node.js of how to create a JSON response with open layers with these new JSON functions. So this is a good place where you can find some examples and try them and see how they fit your application. Today I will talk about this sample product catalog sample where I will show you how to build product catalog REST API using SQL Server, JSON functions and .NET Core. Just one introduction for data access components. Now, in most of these uh, samples on a GitHub account, I'm not using some uh, and some data access framework like Entity Framework or Dapper or uh, or, or uh, SQL Edio.net client. If you open any example, you will see uh, uh, classes like query pipe, query mapper, and command. These are just some wrappers around standard ADO.NET that are used to simplify access to database. So for instance, if you see this query pipe class, you can just pass connection string, and there is a, a method stream in the, this pipe object that where you can just send some SQL query like select star from table for JSON path. This is first argument. In the second argument, you are providing some, some uh, output stream where you want to store these results. In many cases in these uh, samples, you will just uh, see this response body because I am building REST APIs where by executing this for JSON path query and send everything to response body. And this is how REST APIs are built. There, is, there are other classes like query mapper that just execute some uh, query like select something from table for JSON path and just return everything as string. So this data access library is created because it's lightweight and simple wrapper around ADO.NET. It handles connections and have error, error handling. It's fully asynchronous, so it uses be, begin reader asynchronously, write async when it read data from data reader or when it write data to output stream. It is implemented with callbacks, so it is optimized for async programming. And it is open source. If you want to try it, you can just find it on a Nugget or GitHub and just install it and use it and see how it works. Okay, so that was a short introduction in JSON functionalities. Now I will show you a demo uh, to show how to implement REST APIs with uh, SQL Server JSON functions. Okay, here I have one uh, table called product, where I have combined the standard columns with some JSON columns like uh, key value pairs, uh, and uh, array elements, array formatted as tags. So we can use these values in any part of query. In this example, I can use this JSON value function just to extract this made in value from this data column. And here you can see that it is written as standard column. I can create any report using this function. <laughs> like I can group by values by type from JSON uh, uh, column and color, that's the standard column. Put the JSON value in having clause, order by clause, 
use it in uh, some ag aggregate function. So there is no constraint how can I use this JSON functions in uh, uh, MySQL queries. Uh, two functions that are most important for uh, REST APIs are importing data from JSON and formatting results uh, from SQL servers into JSON format. So in this example, you can see how I can take one uh, JSON, like product, uh, product JSON. This is some JSON string that has name, color, size, price, and quantity. So I can just say, select everything from open JSON product. This is this JSON. And I can specify what is what are the columns that I need to return from this JSON. So in this case, I can just execute this query. And you can see that keys from key and values from this JSON uh, text are just returned as one row. This is very useful for importing data because if you have some JSON uh, message that are coming to your REST API, you can just send it to some uh, store procedure or parse it with open data function and directly import it into the table. Another function that is important uh, for REST APIs is for JSON clause. So if I just select everything from this table, I'm getting results in table format. But if I use this for JSON path clause, Everything is formatted as JSON text. Now I can use this JSON text to as a response of some REST APIs. Now, not one important thing. In this JSON response, we have this data column that is form that is for contains this part uh, type and made in uh, keys. Now you can see that this data column is formatted as a text. Uh, so content of this JSON object is just, just wrapped with uh, double quotes and all double quotes inside this uh, JSON is just escaped. This happens because uh, JSON in this equal table is stored as nvar card column. So for JSON clause just assume that this is any text and therefore it just escape all data uh, in this JSON column. So usually you will not you don't want to have this. So you will need to say somehow to this for JSON path clause that information in data column and tag columns are actually JSON strings. If you want to do this, you can use this JSON query function where you just pass this, these JSON columns. And JSON query in this case works like a cast to JSON. If you execute this query with JSON uh, query function, you can see that we are again returning data as JSON, but now values in data column are not escaped. This type and made in fields are returned as JSON objects. So this might be very important for you if you are combining relational and JSON data in a SQL table, and you want to return this as a result. Okay, so this was a short introduction into JSON uh, functions. Now let's see it in action. Here we have one ASP.NET core application that, that will uh, display results uh, from this product table. So if I execute this uh, application, I can see that content of my table is just shown in this web page. I'm using jQuery data tables uh, component that will just add all this sorting, pagination, and filtering on this table. And then I'm feeding this jQuery data table component with a response from some REST API that will populate content in this table. Also, we can add new product or edit some existing products. So let's see how this application is implemented. First, I need one controller. This controller, this standard uh, controller that just returns some data. So it has a couple of 
values like get that will return all products from database. Get by ID that will return single product by ID. Then I have post and patch, post patch and put request and delete request that will either add new product, uh, update product or delete product. So now, if we take a look how this application works. When I refresh this app, you can see here that I'm sending some Ajax request that takes uh, data as JSON. So here is one product array. And this uh, JSON content is just placed into this table. When I click on edit button, I'm sending another request. So request is API product with ID 15. And as a result, I'm getting one JSON uh, object that will be populated in this form. Also, if I add new product like car, and add some color, price, quantity. And if I save the data, you can see here that I'm sending this post request. And that post request is sending some request payload formatted as JSON. So this is one application that completely communicates with uh, REST API using JSON messages and Ajax responses. Now I need to implement this uh, REST APIs. So if I open this, if I open localhost API product, I need to get entire list of JSON objects. If I execute API product some number, I need to get one object, one product with this ID. So how can I use uh, JSON functions to implement this? So let's go to find this first function. This is get method. So what I'm doing here, I'm using standard dependency injection to inject this query pipe object into controller. Then, then I'm calling this method stream where I will pass this query. This query will just select all fields from product table, format them as JSON, and put this root data object. So if I take this query and execute it in uh, Management Studio, You can see that I'm getting this request as JSON. Now, in this uh, method, I'm just telling this uh, data component to execute this query in form of results as JSON and put uh, results into response body of this object. So when I uh, execute this uh, API, API slash product, it will show the same data that you can see in this Measurement Studio window. So it just pass entire JSON object to uh, web client. Now, if I put some ID here, like ID 16, I will do the same thing here. I need one get method that has ID parameter, so I'm calling it API slash product slash five. I will put this ID parameter as a parameter of SQL command. I will create this query where I'm selecting product ID, name, color, price, and quantity from product, where product ID is equal five in this case. And I am formatting everything as JSON. Note this without array wrapper cloud option. Without array wrapper will format results without this array brackets around the, the JSON response. So this is perfect if you need to just return one JSON object as response.
So in this case, if I execute this query, ASP.NET controller will just create this query with four JSON clause, and it will just stream results of this SQL command in response body, and I will get my response to my uh, web page. Uh, other, other requests, such as add new product or post product, are also similar. For instance, if I need to create new product, I can just implement post request. Here, I'm just taking everything from response body and reading everything to end. And this is some string that represents JSON, uh, product JSON. Now, I'm calling proce store procedure insert, insert product from JSON, where I'm passing this JSON uh, string. And I will just execute non query. So this storage procedure will be just take entire text that is sent from my uh, client side app and it will just parse it and store it in a table. Now we can see how this procedure looks. Insert fraud product from JSON. So it takes one parameter, JSON text, that is Envar car. You just parse this product JSON. I'm specifying what columns I need to extract from this JSON, like in this case, name, color, size, price, quantity, data. I'm returning all these columns and inserting this into the product table. So as you can see, a transformation between JSON text that is passed as parameter to this uh, store procedure and uh, and table is very easy. So I just need to take this JSON, send it to open JSON function, it will parse it, parse it and insert it into products table. Another interesting use case here is reporting. In many cases, you need to create something like reports, something like dashboards, where you will show pie charts or uh, bar charts or various reports uh, in this in the web page. In this case, I'm using D3 visualization library. D3 is JavaScript library that is creating uh, charts using uh, SVG, converting, uh, creating charts as SVG images. So in this case, I'm just creating one pie chart and one uh, bar chart. Uh, if you open uh, Network Inspector, we can see how this works. For each of this report, I'm sending one AJAX request, and this AJAX request is providing some data, like key and values that should be placed in this pie chart, or report two is returning X and Y components that should be shown in this bar chart. So in this case, I need to create some REST API that will just execute some report, format it as JSON text, and return exactly what this uh, D3 component need to have to display data. Now, with JSON support, this is fairly easy. I can create something like API slash product slash report one REST endpoint where I can take some query like select select color and average price from product group by color. Now, if, if I execute this query in uh, Management Studio, this is one very simple report. I'm grouping values by color. I have black, magenta, multi, red, silver, and I'm just taking this average price. Now, the question is, how can I provide these results to my D3 chart? Well, I can just add this for JSON clause. And format everything as JSON. Now, you can see these key and values fields that are exactly what this D3 chart expects. Now, the only thing that I need to do is to take this query 
find this stream uh, method and just put this query here. When I execute this report, uh, this component will just execute this query, get results as JSON, and just stream them into response body. And this is what we see when we open this report one. These results here, like key in, in values, are exactly the same values that you see here. You just execute some report where, we, where I'm just returning results as JSON. Now, if we take a look at this dashboard uh, page, we can see that it is <laughs> very simple. I just need to include some jQuery day three libraries. Now, to create a chart, I just need to put <laughs> one SVG element with ID pi, defined width and height. And they use jQuery JSON uh, function that will call this API product report one. And when it, it is done, it will just take this JSON response and it will just create new pi in this SVG element and bind this uh, data from REST API into the pi. And that's everything that I need to create this pi in, in this dashboard. Chart is very similar. So I'm creating one chart as SVG element, calling get JSON from this second API. And when it is done, I can create new bar chart and just bind data. And this is actually code that it's used to create these two reports. Now, if I need to create new report, it is very easy. Like, imagine that I need to create new pie chart. I will just put new, uh, new SVG element here. I will call it uh, pi2. And then I will just copy this. So I have empty uh, chart. I need to copy this code that will call my new REST API. And I will say, OK, I need report 3. And I want to put it in uh, pi2. So this is pi2. So the only thing that I need to do now is just to create third API, like report three, where I can find some new query, like select color as key, average price uh, as max price as value, or something like this, group by color, for JSON path, and this, and now I will just refresh this page. Uh, so. Uh, oh, so I need the pi. And hmm, unfortunately, unfortunately, something is wrong. So just to repeat it again, I have pi two calling report one. And yeah, here is my new pi. So as you can see, uh, it is very easy to create any dashboard, any report. If you have D3 library that can visualize anything, create any kind of report, you just need to find out what kind of JSON data source this D3 library needs. So you can create any SQL query and just add this for JSON clause and you will have your report. 
Now, this is example where we are adding implementing REST APIs with .NET Core. But with, for JS with JSON support in SQL Server, we can use the same thing in any other language. Like in this case, I have one Node.js application where I'm uh, implementing the same uh, set of REST APIs. So I have uh, products. Like I have one REST API that returns all products from this from the database. So what can I do? I can just say map me everything to products and stream this query. Select product ID. Product ID name, color, quantity, data, anything from product table for JSON path and store it and put it in a, in a response object. So this is Node.js REST API that do the same thing like this .NET Core REST API. Or if I need to get product by ID, I can create uh, one endpoint that uh, listens for this uh, API product slash ID create connection, create request with some query that, that contains for JSON clause, and just stream results of this request into the into response. Now I will open this uh, Node.js app. So this is not just an Express app that is listening on port 3000. I will just change this local host from three from this to 3000. And I have exactly the same application, but this application is using uh, Node.js as a backend service. So. You can use uh, these JSON functions in any programming language like C Sharp, .NET Core, Node.js. Another interesting example is our Azure functions. So Azure functions are uh, fun functions that can be used to easily expose your data from some from database as REST APIs. For instance, I can create new Azure function that can be uh, that can be HTTP trigger C sharp, and I can use this function to expose my data from Azure SQL database or any SQL Server database that is in the cloud as REST API. Here I have one prepared uh, Azure function that just returns data from uh, SQL just takes data from a uh, SQL database. Here I'm just taking this connection string, creating query mapper with this connection string, and I'm getting string async built from this uh, JSON query. So if I take this function URL, and if I execute this function, I should get my results uh, formatted as JSON. Hmm. Okay, so here are my results. Function just compiled. Now you can. As you can see, uh, with Azure functions, I can easily expose any query or any stored procedure that returns any report or any JSON re request as HTTP API and just call it from any stored procedure. Now, let's see how can we use this. 
uh, in this example, I have created one uh, Azure function, so you can see that it's very simple. And I'm creating one uh, proxy. Azure uh, function proxy is a new feature that is in preview, where you can create something like, uh, you can do something like routing in ISP.NET Core. So you can say that we have something like API product list that is root template. And this root template should be added to, should be bind to this backend URL that is actually URL of this function. So when I call this URL, more friendly URL, I can get the same results as Azure function. Now let's see how we can use this. I'm going to my uh, .NET app and I will stop it. I will not use it as a uh, ASP.NET Core app. I will go into this JavaScript uh, file and I will replace this root URL that is pointing to my local API and instead of this I will put this API from Azure app. Now I will just open this function uh, this uh, I'll just find uh, this index HTML page and I will just open it as any HTML page without any server without anything else so I will just open it with Chrome and you can see it works so there is no server on my side so dot ISP.NET Core server is down Node.js server does not work here I'm just opening this as a plain HTML page. And when we see how it works, this page is just sending Ajax request to my Azure function. This is app, uh, appas demo Azure website.net, taking data from this Azure function and just showing results into my web page. So as a conclusion here, uh, JSON function in SQL Server enables you to easily transform data uh, from relation format from SQL uh, tables into JSON uh, text <laughs> and also to get some JSON text and parse it and store it in SQL tables. So now interaction between web clients that send or receive JSON and SQL database is extremely simple. You can use the uh, same functions in ASP.NET Core, <laughs> uh, Node.js, Azure Function, any, uh, any framework that can just serve HTTP requests. You can use JSON function on SQL Server on-premise. The same JSON function uh, exists in uh, Azure SQL Database. And also, this demo is done on uh, Microsoft SQL Server on Linux. So you can choose any version of SQL Server either on-premise, on-premise on Windows, on-premise on Linux or Azure Database in Cloud. So any of this version will make your, will, will enable you to very easily create REST APIs and, and interact with your web application. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. Hi, you and Miss. Actually, uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. Really, really interesting. Uh, we have a couple of questions. So uh, the most asked is about security. So how do you secure uh, API? A uh, couple of questions about that is, for example, by your idea, what about the application and authorization process to reach the resource? Is it Windows plus SQL Server application, how it is configurable, and uh, there are several other um, questions similar to this, like uh, how did you set your API, something that the SQL Server does? Okay, oh, yeah, many, many questions about security. Okay, that's it. So, uh, uh, JSON functionalities are completely independent of security. 
So if you want to implement security on ASP.NET layer or in Azure Functions or in Node.js, you can use standard security mechanisms there. So you can protect your REST APIs with standard ASP.NET security mechanisms. And also in, uh, in database layer, you're using same permissions uh, that you're using on standard uh, SQL queries. So formatting results as uh, JSON and <laughs> parsing JSON and storing into tables is completely independent on security. So if you have, if user has some access rights to read from some table or write to some table, JSON queries that read or write from table will, be work, will work like any other query. Okay. Thank you so much. But please also address uh, the other the another question that uh, is JSON data coming from Portal One Forty Three? Uh, you may just want to answer that even I think that after what you just explained that it is probably uh, also clear. The the uh, question is: Does Portal One Forty Three need to be open to public internet? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand you. Is JSON data coming from where? Yeah, so uh, Andy is asking if JSON is really coming from SQL Server when you are, for example, creating a chart. So the question is, uh, does the portal 143 needs to be open to the public internet? So yeah, I didn't understand the question. Yeah. Okay. Can I see the question message? And uh, I apologize, but I didn't understand it. Is my, uh, can you hear me again? Uh, Johan, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, just had uh, a problem. The, uh, the, the question is uh, if uh, the port uh, 143, the standard port uh, which SQL Server has for, needs to be open to the internet, to public access, to allow JSON to be extracted from SQL Server. So, uh, does SQL Server need to open for WebEx? So it is again, it is completely independent. So we have three layer architecture where some web uh, server just handle the uh, web server is endpoint that expose everything to web, and it just uh, send the regular queries and just pass the SQL, uh, JSON results to clients. If this answered that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, uh, that was because, of course, the impression was that, that SQL Server is uh, able to directly generate JSON. Uh, but probably someone missed the, his uh, three-layer architecture uh, where actually JSON is consumed by uh, the ASP or, or non-JS application. And thus, actually, SQL Server is never exposed uh, to internet or to public access. Exactly. This is a... a picture that explains this. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect. And web app or mobile app will just uh, be proxy between web clients and SQL Server. SQL Server is never exposed. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So just, uh, okay, just one minute for one latest question. Let me pick one. Uh, uh, yeah, well, this is good because uh, we make uh, people happy. What SQL Server version supports the JSON? So it is added in SQL Server 2016, and it is in uh, Azure SQL database. Yeah, and, and I think also the SQL Express support that, right? All the editions, any, right? any edition is supported in all editions. Yeah, so you can just use uh, SQL Server in JSON from 2016, SQL Azure, all edition, all platforms. So also Linux and Linux, of course. Yes. Okay, I think uh, this is all. Um, yeah. Oh, just one last. Uh, this is really quick. Uh, if the data, so when you were showing uh, how to convert JSON to a table, what happens if you uh, try to uh, cast, uh, um, in, let's say, a uh, string into an integer? So you are trying to cast a JSON string into an integer value. Will it work, uh, or you will get an error? So if I try to uh, cast. Uh... So uh, if I try to cast a JSON value into mm -hmm. integer, it is just yeah, standard exactly. version. It's like uh, uh, casting a substring into integer. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. 
Perfect. These three functions are just something like advanced string functions. There are no other differences. Okay. So all the all the casting rules uh, will apply as well. Yes. Perfect. All functions are fully con uh, aligned with all SQL Server semantic and all other Perfect. functions. Perfect. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Johan was really, really uh, interesting. Uh, people are asking for slides. Uh, just remind uh, everyone is asking for slides that uh, they will be. Uh, I will uh, post them on uh, on the user group uh, web page, uh, but also the everything that uh, Jovan uh, showed us is available on GitHub already. Uh, I will send the link uh, uh, on the following on the follow up email. I will send just after a couple of days after this uh, this meeting. Thank you very much again, everyone, for coming, and especially the new Joan for giving the presentation. It was really, really interesting. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.